we will be starting Friday session. Uh, the opening session is the Oku Build Your Own Pass. It will be presented by Sergey Korhomenko. Uh, Sergey is a software engineer, Melos Solutions. It's an outsourcing company, and Melos is interested. Uh, Sergey, <laughs> Sergey is interested in Docker and Pass uh, as a hobby, and he'll introduce us to the uh, Docker world. Let's welcome Sergey. Good morning, everyone. It's going to be a light, easy speech about optimizing your data workflow with uh, deployments and how to stop an appropriate uh, development environment and push it to staging server just to, for example, show it to your customers, just to see how it will work uh, on production and test to just reduce the amount of uh, possible errors in production. And it will be, you will really enjoy it because it is very easy to do. Um, as I treat myself uh, as problem solver, I always try to start with problem. I think all of you face the problem of deployments because uh, it can be very, very hard to predict uh, which packages uh, are in the system, which packages are out of the system. And uh, for the last two years, Docker and whole virtual containers uh, infrastructure and Virtual, virtual containers world uh, did a great breakthrough into programmers world, and uh, there are a lot of uh, a lot of talks uh, about Docker, about virtual containers uh, on this conference as well as uh, on others. So uh, you all know that there are some kind of dependencies in every application, and you need to manage them somehow. And it is very bad when uh, they clash with each other, so your application uh, will simply not work. And uh, it is very hard to figure out why. Also, you need to, to install all those dependencies. And uh, it is not very easy because uh, they all depend on operation system, even sometimes on hardware and so on and so on. And uh, you need to automate it somehow. There are a lot of solutions nowadays, uh, for example, like uh, Amazon Web Services, Heroku, uh, OpenShift, uh, but uh, they are for money and uh, they cost, uh, I think, a reasonable price uh, for, service, for services they provide. But uh, do you really need it if you can do this uh, in a little bit limited version? Buy for free. You can just pay for your host provider and that's all, that's all your cost. And now, I'm really happy to introduce you to Docker. What is this exactly? This is the lightweight, 200 of bash, Docker-powered platform as a service solution. Uh, it is an, something like a virtual containers orchestration solution uh, hosted on your own server and you can fix it, you can manipulate your, con your containers, you can extend them by plugins. Uh, I think uh, I won't dig uh, into the details of virtual containers today because uh, you know there are a lot of talks uh, about the Docker and in details uh, in this conference. So I will just show you the easiest thing you can do with that. Okay, mm, I won't argue with this. Uh, let's take, for example, a simple Flask application. Uh, this, this will be something like Blueprint. Uh, it takes uh, uh, parts from uh, your online and it shows you some templates uh, from your application. Uh, I'll show you how to set up uh, your local development environment and how to push it to your dog post instance. Uh, you can find uh, in my article in your textbooks, you are all supposed to have uh, in more detailed way how to install Doku, so I won't uh, just waste time on it uh, because I know you are from after breakfast and uh, you, you need a light morning. So, okay, I'll show you some things. Could you increase the font size a little bit? Um, I'm sorry? Increase the font size, please. Increase the font size. In this reasonable, I will do this.
Is this okay? So we have for a simple application with a Docker file on the site to define your local and uh, as well uh, state environment. We have a file with requirements. We have uh, a simple test files and uh, exactly the same application. I took it from uh, flash examples. So let's take a look on our Docker file. Uh, as you see, it is very simple and straightforward. Uh, we, we just uh, take a Python uh, container, container image, uh, we make our work deal, we install requirement, and we run our application. Uh, but uh, as you know, uh, Docker is uh, very hard to manipulate and to run uh, on its own because of its advanced and uh, very, very, uh, very, very hard syntax. Uh, so, uh, what uh, I will show you uh, for your local environment uh, setting up uh, is Docker Compose. I really like this uh, thing because uh, it, uh, it, can, it uses uh, YAML syntaxes for orchestrating your Docker containers. You can do that everything with your Docker containers uh, in a more uh, reusable and uh, uh, simple way. So let's take a look. Uh, what is written here is uh, that we can just uh, build our Docker image from our Docker file. Uh, we expand, uh, our, we expose our ports uh, and we uh, wire our current uh, work deal on uh, host machine to our virtual containers uh, slash code director which we created uh, in our docker file. So, how it works? We built our image. Okay, uh, I can show you the building process because, you know, I practiced, practiced it uh, yesterday evening to show this for you. One second, please. So we create our image, uh, and <laughs> it still works because it is cached. Uh, the most, uh, uh, the best thing I like in Docker as is the, its cache mechanism. So I think that I won't uh, show you a build process. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> I can't do anything with cache. And uh, we can see an example. of the application and it just works for your local environment so this is my uh, docker machine IP address this application port and uh, this is a working application in two clicks and now uh, I will show you how to deploy it to docker in an easy way let's take a look So we need to just wire our Docker Docker instance installed somewhere on my own server uh, to our repository as a remote address. A remote. So let's do this. Okay, uh, so we need to specify our Docker uh, address and uh, specify the name of application we deployed. So in our case, it will be just blueprint. 
and let's put this. We see how it pushes and how it uh, builds uh, the container on Docu on web. Uh, so Docu just uh, picks my Docker file and builds an environment. And that's all. We can check uh, this application on my server in a second. Uh, I configured my docu as uh, in, in the way to uh, wire my applications to subdomains. So let's take a look. And it works. You can see the URL of my own web page and it simply works. But uh, how can we use it uh, for, for example, in the case when we need to show different versions from different feature branches to our customers? For example, one, one developer works on uh, I don't know, payments, one developer works on something like uh, design features and another one uh, fixes database models. And uh, we need to deploy it in a very, very, very fast way to show as demo to our customers without any clashes, without any dependencies, uh, conflicts, uh, and so on and so on. So we will fix our example a little bit, uh, create a separate branch and push it to Docker as a separate application. Let's push it to Docu as a separate application, but uh, to do this uh, for a separate application, to make Docu recognize it as a separate application, we need to create a new remote for it. So let's do this. And one notice from the beginning, as we uh, always need to push our code to Docker to the master branch of the remote. Because uh, otherwise it will simply not work. It won't show, uh, changes won't be shown. It will be shown the oldest and older version or it will simply won't be deployed. Okay, it's finished. Oh, I'm sorry, I pushed another remote. Docu, we need to use Docu that. But in a way, it will be fast. Okay, it works, but... 
title part, HTML title content. Oh, I'm sorry, yes, I fixed the title. So we can take a look on page source and this is development environment. Yes, that's it. Thank you for a note. Thank you for a guide. All right, uh, and this was about Docker containers. Uh, but what about features like uh, Heroku has, uh, just like uh, figuring out what application do you have and build any run on it on its own without specifying uh, any dependencies uh, and environment configurations in your Docker file. So let's take a look on just simple chat application I prepared for you. It will use uh, Heroku-ish to determine your, the type of your application install all dependencies and simply run it. Uh, there is a small mistake uh, in, my, in my article, but you will, you will, I hope you will read it uh, in your textbooks. Uh, this is about uh, Buildvax and Heroquish. Uh, when, I, when I was writing my article, Docu used, was using uh, Buildvax for determining the application type, type and building environment based on its predictions. But uh, from the latest Docu updates, uh, you can uh, figure out that uh, they don't use uh, build packs anymore. They use a package uh, called Heroquish, which emulates this behavior. So let's take a look. Here we have a small chat application. Uh, you can see that I don't have any uh, uh, any of Docker files or anything here. I just added a pros file. This is a file where we can specify how to run our application. So we just need to specify a container. Or this sounds like the name of your worker and the command how we can run it. Okay, let's just push it. I'll show you that I don't have any chat prepared for you, so it will give you 4, 404 error, and yes, it is not there. And we push it. We see how no packages are building. This is not very really interesting, but it is a process. And we open our chat. It takes a length of time to load it because it's just in JavaScript. Yes, it works. So we can write anything here, and right? you can connect there from your devices and chat with me during this conference. Uh, so yes, you you saw an example. You saw examples of how we deployed node application, how we managed with the different branches of Flask applications, 
And uh, now I'll show you on the real example how I manage my own uh, blog and web page. Uh, web page is a simple static files, and blog is even a WordPress application. So you can do, you can deploy to do absolutely anything. Like for example, you can do this to, in a, to OpenShift or to Amazon Web Services and to any kind of uh, platform as a service as providers. So all I will do. And we deploy my study page. <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> yeah, no JS and the conference is quite easy. I agree with you. <laughs> nice guy. Uh, or 
uh, Amazon cloud formation uh, for such purposes uh, because they're more mature. But if you need to fix things fast, uh, you can use this because it's open source too, uh, but just with extended support. And uh, Flip is another project uh, similar to this, but uh, I really haven't uh, too much time to explore it uh, uh, in deep way. But uh, from testimonials I saw, which I saw, it is quite a good project too. And uh, you know, uh, I will show you now a small example, as I think that we have some time, uh, of uh, extending uh, Docker by plugins. Let's take a look uh, from Docker from another from another perspective. As you can see, I already extended my Docker by a variety of plugins, uh, for example, by uh, PostgreSQL Server and Redis. And I think I saw, yeah, MariaDB is something, that, something similar to uh, MySQL, but uh, it's more stable for Docker and I use it for my WordPress blog. So, what we can do? Uh, if you remember, we deployed two versions of our uh, flash applications. So let's create a database for it uh, and just pass uh, database URL via environment variable. So let's do this. and receive an appropriate URL for our Postgres scale database. And now we can simply pass it to the environment of variable to our class application and somehow pick it there. That's it. There are only two steps to wire any persistent container to our application. And uh, I won't do this now because we have not enough time to do this. Uh, uh, we can use this URL uh, and get it to be a term variable in our application. All right. I want to finish this speech with a small joke about open source. Uh, it's about doctor and patient and patient. A patient comes to doctor, the do doctor and says, Doctor, when I touch myself, it hurts. I touch my arm, it hurts. I touch my knee, it hurts. I touch my head and it hurts. What's wrong with me? Doctor says, I know what's wrong with you. You broke your finger. So when you deal with open source, I really advise you to take a look after your fingers because uh, open source is a, another world where you can do everything by yourself and pursue anything of any, any work of anybody in this world. But there are, there are some disadvantages. Like maybe you have different versions of operation systems and you need to figure out how to adopt and other solutions for myself. So when you will play with Docker, I strongly advise you to use its uh, issues on GitHub to communicate with others and to do some research by yourself. Just take a look on your fingers and figure out why uh, your Docker doesn't work for you or work in another way. Or you can just contact me and I will try to help uh, you with uh, any questions you have. So this time for questions, you can uh, ask anything and uh, for example, you can ask for a demonstration of some features of Docker I didn't cover in my speech.
So please. Thank you. What would you ask is the source code for, for this available somewhere on the web, you know, the modified uh, blueprint application that we could have a look at? Yes, of course. Uh, you can uh, send me, you can drop me a line uh, to email and I will give you URLs of all applications uh, I use in my speech. And also I can send you a URL. Also you can find your textbooks URL for uh, Docker documentation for its uh, GitHub you, uh, repository and uh, everything you need to install. Uh, yes, uh, the second line, uh, the second line which is underlined is the, my email address and the first line is my Twitter account. You uh, say that uh, Docker do not scale uh, uh, for uh, multi-cost, but uh, we can use uh, Swarm to scale this uh, to other cost. We can, but it won't work. <laughs> Definitely, a uh, server and a project uh, with uh, a try to scale Doku on a few costs uh, to make its own cluster, but it was bu it is buggy, it is bad, and I strongly don't advise don't advise you to use it uh, because uh, even for staging and even to play with this because it is useless. Uh, Doku architecture is not adapted to scale on multi cost. Are there any other questions? Thank you very much, Sergey. Thank you.